Welcome to the third tutorial for Russell 2. In the last tutorial, you learned how to complete a soil erosion estimate for a single crop on a simple hill slope. In this tutorial, I will explain how to estimate long-term average soil losses expected throughout a crop rotation. We will do this on the same field located on the Alora Research Station in Wellington County. Please press continue in the bottom right hand corner to advance to the next slide. In Russell 2, we will begin by opening the profile called Tutorial Example. This is the example that we saved in the previous tutorial. If it is not already displayed, then along the top menu bar, select File, Open, Profile, and open Tutorial Example. Alternatively, click the open profile icon that is in the shape of a green slope and open tutorial example. If you named your profile differently at the end of the previous tutorial, then open that file. In the previous tutorial, we estimated the long-term annual erosion rate for a single year of grain corn grown. Now, we will estimate the long-term average annual erosion rate for a corn, soybean, winter wheat rotation on the same hill slope. The climate, soil type, slope length, and gradient will remain the same. To describe the corn, soybean, winter wheat rotation, I will need to change the cropping and management practices. This is done by describing the crop rotation grown on the field using Russell 2's Rotation Builder, accessed in Step 4B. Click on the Rotation Builder folder to open up the Rotation Builder screen. At the top of the Rotation Builder window, you will see the Management List table, which lists the crops in the rotation. The expected start and end dates for each cropping year are also shown in this table. Currently, we just see the grain corn crop. To add a second crop to the rotation list, click on the plus sign located in the top left-hand corner of the management list. A new row will appear. Click on the drop-down arrow located to the right of the new row and from the CMZ ON folder, select the crop that will follow corn in the rotation. In our example, I will select soybeans planted in the narrow 7 inch to 20 inch rows. I will assume the soybeans are fall plowed like the green corn. Once the soybean crop and tillage practice is selected, check the dates for planting this crop relative to the harvesting of the preceding crop. You will want to make sure that the previous crop was harvested before tillage or planting begins for the next crop in the rotation. We will leave the dates as is in our example as the default date for corn harvest is October 20th and the default date to begin fall plowing for the next year's soybean crop is November 1st. Please note that the dates do not have to fall on the exact year. They just have to be in the proper planting sequence in terms of month and day. Now, let us add winter wheat to this rotation. Click the plus sign again in the top left hand corner of the management list. Select winter wheat from the list in the CMZ ON small grains folder. I will then select the management practice based on my assumption that the soybean stubble is simply dissed prior to planting the winter wheat and that the wheat straw is baled after wheat harvest. Remember to check the planting and harvest dates for proper alignment each time a new crop is added to the rotation. In this example, you will see that Russell 2 assumed the soybeans were harvested on October 10th, 2002, and the winter wheat was planted on October 4th, 2003. Russell 2 assumes you cannot plant a crop until the previous crop has been harvested. It therefore waited one year before it planted the winter wheat in this rotation. 
to remove the year that Russell 2 places in the rotation as a result of the default planting and harvest dates, I need to adjust the soybean harvest and wheat planting dates so they align with each other. I'll assume that the soybeans will be harvested on October 10th and the winter wheat planting will begin the next day. The easiest way to make this date adjustment is to use tools found under the Correct Dates By column beside the winter wheat crop. It is the column farthest to the right. Select the drop down arrow to display a list of options for changing the date. If I scroll down, there is an option called One Year Earlier Slide Start Dates. Clicking on this moves the start date for winter wheat to October 11, 2002 to coincide with the soybean harvest date. It also leaves the anticipated harvest date for winter wheat at July 25th. There are other options for changing the default planting and harvest dates for different crops. For example, reviewing individual crop managements and changing operation dates. When you change these dates for individual crop managements, however, you will need to save the revised description in your My Managements folder. Generally, for the small difference in erosion estimates that result from minor date changes, we recommend that the default dates be used and that harvest and planting dates be aligned using the tools in the Correct Dates By column. You have now described the full rotation and can apply and close the Rotation Builder window. As you leave the screen, it will ask you to rename the new management sequence. I will name it corn underscore soy underscore w wheat conventional tillage. Russell 2 will save this new management in a temporary folder and will return you to the main profile screen. At the bottom of the profile window, you will see that Russell 2 recalculated the average annual soil loss under this new management as 1.7 tons per acre per year. If you would like to save the rotation that you developed as a permanent management option, in the profile window next to Save Temp Management as Permanent, click Save. A window then appears that allows you to navigate to a folder where you can save this rotation permanently. For example, I will click this arrow to navigate to the My Rotations folder. I will save it as corn underscore soy underscore w wheat conventional tillage. Saving the rotation allows you to use it in future soil erosion calculations. Thank you for watching Module 3 of the Russell 2 tutorial series. You should now be able to build a crop rotation sequence in Russell 2 and use this to estimate the long-term average erosion rate for that rotation. Before leaving Russell 2, try creating the same rotation but change the tillage practices to a no-till practice. You will see a difference in the average annual soil loss estimate and the soil conditioning index. These tutorials are a great introduction to Russell 2. However, there are many different field practices used on Ontario farms that we will not illustrate in the tutorials. Russell 2 has many different windows and features that can help describe the variety of cropping and management options you may use. Try experimenting with Russell 2 to become familiar with its capabilities. Refer to the Russell 2 Program User Guide from the United States Department of Agriculture's website for more information and help. You can find this by going to the USDA's website and searching Russell 2 in the search bar. Click on the first link, scroll down, and click on the Russell 2 Program User Guide. We hope that the information in these tutorials will help you compare the different soil health benefits of alternative management practices. If you have any questions as you apply Russell 2 for Ontario, contact the Agricultural Information Contact Center toll free at 
424-1300 or by email at ag.info.omafra at ontario.ca and they will connect you with a technical specialist.